Hey guys, welcome to our channel, before starting the video if you have not subscribed our channel till now then please subscribe it, and if you have not watched our previous videos then watch it, in this video, we will see how to implement Jcash in Spring Boot. Before adding anything let's check it what is cache and why is it required. Caching is a method to store frequently required data so that it's readily available when requested. Before the start, anything let's run and see whatever we added till now it's working fine or not. whatever we added to the last video that's working as expected. Let's check what are the dependencies are required to implement Jcash. So first is Spring Boot Starter Cache Dependency. Let's copy this into Palm XML file. And another dependency is Cache API. Let's copy this also into Palm XML file. We don't need any version, that's the beauty of Spring Boot. We will create a separate configuration file jcache config. need to annotate this class as enable caching. Here you can create any time duration so whatever you selected cache will arrive that period of time. So, in this case, we set it for 10 minutes. So using create cache method you can create as many as cache. Why not one and use everywhere? Needs multiple because one cache can hold only one type of object at the same time.
Now need to add cash related annotations in service implement classes. See that's it, hope you can understand how much easy it is. Let's check Cashable is working or not. We clicked multiple times on user list link and it fetched record only once, after that it's reusing from the cache. See it's working. The same thing is working in case of address also, once it fetched data from the database it won't hit the database again until that duration expires, once expired then again hit the database. What if? I want to refresh cache manually so there some more annotations are available so let's see what are those and how to use them, but before that, we need to add refresh button in list page so let's add, and for the refresh button, we need to create entire request flow. So there is another annotation cache evict so that will help to replace old cache with the new cache. Same will follow for address also, so don't get bored it's a practice so you guys don't forget. I know you won't get such content easily so please subscribe so somehow I will motivate myself to make lot many videos like that. Let's change something and then refresh the cache let's see it's working or not.
See it's not working, data is not changing because of cache so need to refresh cache manually. See it's happening let's do same for address also. What if, we added a new record or update existing and I don't want to refresh cache then how do we handle that? There is one more annotation is there cache put that will take care of refresh section based on key. Let's see it's working or not. See it's working. There are some more annotations we will see how to use them. Cache config so instead of putting cache value every time you can put once and you can put multiple cache names in that array. So now no need to put cache name again and again. There is one more annotation caching so using that you can use put and evict both together. Still, there are a lot of things need to cover that will cover in future. Let's check after add changes everything is working fine or not. See it's working. Let's review whatever we added step by step. As you see it's not complicated the only thing you need to follow proper steps. Don't worry about code it's already available in GitHub. Download the code and enjoy, the only thing you need to remember don't forget to subscribe our channel.
I hope you are like this video then please subscribe our channel.